Good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm gonna review our 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is my garage, and this is our new Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera that we just picked up from Utah, and it's actually gonna be sold as soon as we're done kind of playing with it. We're gonna do a few modifications to it and get it cleaned up. So we're not gonna have it very long, but in the meantime, we're gonna learn all about it, do some fun stuff to it, and of course, show you everything that we can about it in the time that we have with it. So I've owned four Ferraris so far. This is my first Lamborghini, and I didn't know exactly what to expect, and it's kind of exceeding my expectations in some ways and disappointing me in other ways. So let's talk all about that in just a second. Real quick, before we get started, if you'd like to support us, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We do appreciate it when you guys do that. It does support the channel, so thank you so much. And also, don't forget that we sell parts and services for cars, so go check out our website, normalguyssupercar.com. There you can buy things like exhaust and suspension components, and you can even hire us to help you find the right supercar for your needs. So check that out. Use the code NGS10. It hooks you up with 10% off almost everything we sell. All right, you guys, let's talk about this absolutely stunning around Cio Borealis Lamborghini Gallardo. Super Leggera. So when I first started looking up these Lamborghinis, I told myself I had to get a Rancia Borealis. I had seen this color in person, and let me tell you, it is truly one of the most spectacular colors I've seen on a car. It is a deep, deep pearl. Kind of hard to see with the lighting in here, but you can see that it alters the color in the different light. In the sunlight, it turns almost like a whitish yellow color. It's just fantastic, and as it gets darker, it just becomes a deep orange, and it's just Stunning, absolutely stunning. I am a huge, huge fan of this color. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And of course, with the Gallardo Superleggera, you get all these cool little accents like the stripe on the side, you get carbon fiber mirrors, carbon fiber all over the place, and a bunch of other interesting things that we're gonna talk about that make this car unique to the Superleggera. So it is actually a fairly rare car. So the 08s, they only made 600 and something of them. I think it's around like 640. Only 172 of those made it to the United States. And of those, something like only 60 of them are in Arancia Borealis. So it's a pretty rare car. They did offer a manual transmission. Most of them came in e-gear. I think it was something like eight of these were actually made with the manual transmission. So extremely rare, obviously much more valuable than this car. But these are actually unique wheels to the Superleggera. They are a little bit lighter. You can see it says right on it, Automobili Lamborghini. And then down here, uh, well, it's upside down. It says Superleggera. We do have the carbon ceramic brakes. This is an $18,000 option. And they only put it in a couple hundred of the Gardos in total, including the Superleggera. So it is a pretty rare option extremely expensive and you'll see that when we're driving it it kind of makes the driving experience well let's just go with unique yes like i mentioned we have this beautiful carbon fiber side view mirror the carbon weave on this car is just fantastic they did a very good job spent a lot of time paying attention to the details we have these carbon fiber side skirts along here so i've already kicked them by accident trying to get in and out of the door let me tell you this thing is a pain in the butt getting out of it sits so low. So because this is a Gen 1 Garda, we have the different headlights and taillights, and of course, a little bit different styling accents. The side markers have been blacked out by the previous one of the previous owners. I don't know who did it. So those are both tinted, as are the rear taillights. Whether or not you hate that or love it, I don't know. I'm not here to say. I think they did a pretty good job. And actually, I think it looks kind of cool with just black and orange everywhere. There's nothing but black and orange. Well, okay, gray too. And believe it or not, the Superleggera has a unique exhaust that is custom to the Superleggera. It's supposed to be a little bit louder. These are actually functional air vents. So when I was washing the car the other day, there was a ton of condensation coming up from the heat and humidity off of the heat exchanger that's in there. So yes, all these vents on this car are actually functional. So you've got air intakes here and there. I believe they go to radiators and actually some of them are intakes for the engine. So I believe this one is the intake for the engine because when you're driving it with the windows down and you give it a little bit of gas, you can actually hear the intake sucking in right there. It's actually quite a cool sound. I like it a lot. Another unique feature to the Superleggera is that all of the rear windows are Lexan or plexiglass. So this, you can see, you can actually push it, is actually plexiglass, as is the rear window and this rear deck lid. 
So all of them are super lightweight. Of course, that means you have to be very careful not to scratch them. Lexan does scratch a lot easier than glass. And along with that, this entire rear trunk piece is, of course, carbon fiber with the carbon fiber wing. And this was specific to the Superleggera. There were two wings that they offered. This is the high wing. There's a low wing that sits much closer to the deck. I personally think the high wing looks the best. And integrated into the wing, is actually a reverse camera. So how modern of Lamborghini, thank you for adding that. It makes backing up this car so much easier. To open the rear latch for the engine, you have to kind of get this seat to come forward or stick your arm around here. It's really tight squeeze and there's the latch in the back. And the release for the frunk is right there. It's just a manual pull. All right, let's take a look at this V10 five liter engine. This is actually still a Lamborghini engine. So the 5.2 in the Gen 2 Gardos is more of an Audi engine. This is still basically a Lamborghini engine. So it still has a bit of a different sound that's unique to Lamborghini engines. I actually kind of wanted that. So that was one of the things. I know everyone likes the Gen 2s more. I actually kind of like the Gen 1 for that reason. The Superleggera does add a little bit of horsepower over the stock Gardo. It's 11 more horsepower, so we're a little bit above 500 horsepower, like 500 and I don't know, 510, somewhere around there. This is all-wheel drive, so it does scoot pretty darn good. We do have the e-gear transmission, so it's a six-speed transmission. It's got the clutch and hydraulic actuators that mean that the computer controls it. You have flappy paddles. You don't manage the clutch, which, of course, leads to some people believing that they're terrible cars, but as you'll see, it's not as bad as you think although it does take some finesse to drive it correctly. So we'll get out there and show you in just a minute. Everything's in Italian where possible. So Olio, and you'll see in the dashboard, it says like benzina instead of gasoline. It's way down there. So like working on this car is gonna be a total pain in the butt because we got these big sides that stick way up in the air. So I'm not looking forward to that. I think the spark plugs would be quite an interesting challenge with you kind of hovering over the side of the car. Of course, we're gonna be swapping out the exhaust, so that'll be interesting. We have to remove the entire back of the car. And yes, after some debate, we decided we are changing out the clutch. So this car has 31,000 miles on it. It's still on the original clutch and it's at 22%, which is about right. These clutches should last about 40,000 miles when the cars are driven properly. So that means that it probably hasn't been beat on too hard and no one's reversed up a giant hill or anything dumb like that. Of course, if you didn't know, super legera means super light. And so, well, how much lighter is this thing? Well, it's, eh, it's like 100 pounds lighter. So maybe, yeah, it's not a whole lot. So this car still weighs a hefty 3,430 pounds or so. So it's not a light car. And a lot of that is, of course, because of the all-wheel drive system. If you got rid of that, I'm gonna guess it'd probably be closer to like a 31, 3200 pound car. That's about in line with most other cars that are kind of of this size in that area with the aluminum chassis and aluminum body. But of course, lots of carbon fiber bits. And as you'll see in the interior, a lot of Alcantara that, that save a lot of weight along with seats that are basically manual seats except for the backrest is uh, electronic. So being the Ferrari owner and going to a Lamborghini, one thing that's gonna be really disappointing is the complete lack of front space so you could fit maybe a bag in there i don't know it's really really small that is a very very small trunk we do have a six disc cd changer which is common at the time battery is right behind that door so we've got the trickle charger cord right there i even have the toolkit and of course some documentation from a previous sale of this car which interesting enough it was sold by cmc motors at one point i kind of like that they have these chrome struts they have those on the rear as well. Those look really cool. I think it's just a nice little touch. I have to say, Lamborghini likes to add a little flare here and there, and that is some cool flare. So right there is our sticker. You can see showing the color, Arancia Borealis. So there's one downside to this color, which is it is extremely difficult to paint match. If you get a paint chip on it, yeah, it's never gonna be the same. So that being said, my suggestion would be if you have a color that's like this with that much pearl, you probably want to PPF the entire car. And if you can't afford that, at least at a bare minimum, do the front of the car. This one does have it all the way on the front, not the entire car. If I was keeping this car for me personally, I would do the whole thing. I just think it would be worth it because you don't want to have to repaint this car. It would be really bad. Okay, so hopping into the interior, and I will tell you, having owned Ferraris and now going to this car, it is a bit more difficult to get in, which you wouldn't think that, but for some reason it is. I think it has a bigger door sill and it sits just a little bit lower. This car has been lowered. So uh, this is the factory suspension, but it did get lowered. That does make it a little bit trickier, but then again, 
two of my Ferraris were lowered, so uh, anyway, I'm gonna squeeze my butt in here and uh, we'll show you the interior. But before I crawl in, I'm gonna show you these amazing seats. So these are all Al Alcantara. You can see it says Super Legera on the side. The bolsters are in fantastic condition and they just have such a nice feel to them. It has a manual release for the seat to move forward and back. It does not go up and down. And we do have one switch that, well, slowly moves the backrest. And then we have a switch up here yeah, to be able to release the seat and have it go forward. That's all you get. And there's just a tiny bit of like shelf space behind the seats. If you want to store like a, I don't know, a handbag or something. Everything in the interior is Alcantara or carbon fiber. You can see the entire center console is carbon fiber. We have a tiny little spot for your sunglasses back there. Here are some of the controls to turn on sport, automatic, and then traction control. I love the little squiggly Lamborghini that's uh, tilted to the side. Looks like it's about to fall off a cliff. We have an axle lifter, believe it or not, which is super handy, especially since this car has been lowered. You have a button to activate the rear camera, your, your side mirror controls, and then a pretty simple AC system. I don't know what the hell that button does. I haven't figured that one out. I need to read the manual, but it has auto controls or whatever. From everything I've seen and heard, it's basically an Audi system. So is the radio and infotainment. It is basically an Audi. It's not exactly the world's greatest, but uh, I'll power it on and show you. So I'm gonna key it on. And by the way, you're gonna hear this uh, whirring sound. A lot of people are like, ooh, it's like charging up the engine. It's just the secondary air. It's not that impressive, so see. Yeah, that sound like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, it's just secondary air. All right, so we're powered up and you can see, well, I mean, it's not the greatest, but you know, it's okay for 2008. If you push this button, we actually have access to a DVD player and we have two SD card slots. So I'm actually gonna load some MP3s on that later. That's actually pretty convenient. I will say that is very handy. Given the size of this thing, I wonder if you can replace it with like a modern double din receiver. That would be very cool. We even have a reasonable size glove box and an iPod that was uh, left here courtesy of whoever else owned it. And the manual is still in there in a nice, beautiful, suede bound or alcantara bound booklet so i have to say i do love the analog gauges one complaint though is because the speedometer goes all the way up to 210 kind of makes it hard to get exactly the mile per hour you want and the car you know it responds quickly so you know trying to keep it right at like you know 45 55 or whatever the speed limit may be yeah it's sometimes challenging center you have the indicator for what gear you're in and uh, of course we have a little compass telling us that we're heading south we have some gauges up here i love it again everything's in italian press olio temperature alia and batteria yeah very cool and then, uh, like i said before yeah you got benzina and over here we have temp aqua yeah lamborghini basically was like no no you're gonna speak italian too bad fascinatingly they put the reverse button over here on the left side why it's over there i don't know why they kind of just put it here I and mean, we've got two dead buttons for i don't i don't get it whatever another complaint i have is these tiny teeny little shift pedals they're so cute they're so tiny why don't they put some real size pedals it's like they they wanted to like make sure that you had your hands at nine and three in order to shift. Another distinct feature of the Super is of course these carbon fiber door panels, little leather pull strap in the center. So all of this Alcantara and carbon fiber in the center is unique to this car. And that's how they get some of the weight savings. And let me tell you, it is just beautiful. The interior of this car is striking. I have to say it is fantastic. Okay, we've talked about it enough. Let's take it out for a drive and see how it behaves and see if the E-gear is just as bad as everyone seems to think or is it actually not that terrible? Well, let's go out and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, we're in the Supernatura. So the notorious E-Gear. Well, the one thing I've noticed already is uh, low speeds, it's not even as good as the Ferrari F430. I would say it's somewhere between the 360 and the 430. Uh, definitely not as good as the Scuderia. So, you know, this is supposed to be kind of the, the competitor to Scuderia in the Gallardo world. So, well, that part of it, they did not quite compare. All right, so we're gonna back up and uh, you'll see it kind of lurches. You can, you can feather it just right and it will behave, but uh, it takes a lot of finesse. And it's just kind of very, on off it's almost very binary that's true of both the gas pedal and the brake pedal it's a very binary car 
It just wants to go or it wants to stop, nowhere in between. We, we do not go the same speed. No, you get one or the other. Gotta look cool, we're in a Lamborghini. All right, here we go. And you can see, oop, yep, a little bit of a jump and then it gets going. The sound of this car is really good. Uh, they crushed it. I think this sounds better than a stock F430. Although I'll say it does not sound as good as a modified 430 because then you can get that high pitched sound. This is a very good sounding exhaust for a stock exhaust. I'm quite pleased with it. The downshifts, it's got a good note to it. A little bit of herky jerky. Ugh, yeah, brakes are like on and off. And I think that's, from what I've read, that's more of a function of the carbon ceramics are just very touchy. So at slow speeds, you know, it shifts fine. It's just that first zero to five miles an hour is just kind of, eh. Not the greatest, but it's not terrible. I don't think it's as deserved as the hate that these F1 style uh, gearboxes get. It's just, it's not terrible. All right, see, that wasn't too bad. Now I will tell you, uh, right now we're in regular mode. We'll put in sport mode in a minute and the shifts get violent, very violent. So we need the car to warm up a bit before we can really play. got all the drive we can hear a lot of transmission noise it's I kind of like that steering's heavy let me tell you the the, uh, the all-wheel drive does add some weight to the steering it does not feel as precise as like a Ferrari F430 but it's it's still super good it's still very planted with the super Leggero suspension setup it is a very very stiff ride we were talking about maybe driving this back from Utah think God, we did not. I don't think my ass could have handled that. This is not as comfortable as a 430. It's not even as comfortable comfortable as a Scuderia. It is, it is a rough car. This is like a street legal race car. You are getting exactly a street legal race car. And we're, about, we're gonna go on a rough road here in a second. You'll see it's gonna bounce me all over the place. Downshifts again. I think they're kind of fun. It's got a nice like, you know, it revs the engine real good. We get some of that. I don't know why it gets so much hate. I think it's a it's it's a fantastic gearbox. It's just not as good as a dual clutch. And everyone got so used to the dual clutch stuff that you know it's like oh if it's not dual clutch it's crap. Welcome to all things Scottish. Our slogan is if it's no Scottish it's crap. If it's not a manual it's crap. Well, this is still pretty damn good. Funny enough, even with the factory exhaust, you still get like some pops and bangs. It's it's pretty fun. All right, we're gonna turn on a. Rough road, this is my rough road test. I do the same loop on every review and already bouncing around a bit. Oh yeah, here we go. Getting some, getting some bouncy stuff. It gets a little bit rougher up here. I gotta slow down for this one, otherwise we'll bottom out. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of endearing being this rough. You know, it really, you you can't mistake that you're in a fun fast car when you're driving it and it bounces around and beats you up like this there's there's no hiding it you don't think oh you know like this this is comfy i could drive this all day no you're like we're gonna do this for a very specific reason for a very specified distance maybe even go on the track or something but that's about it Let's put it in sport mode. So we're on a fun road now. Okay, here we go. Let's give it some beans. <laughs> Holy shit! Whoa, yes! Good job, Lamborghini! That's why we want this car. Holy crap. 
lots of torque just a ton of torque way more torque than the uh, f430 wow Cut off the traffic. Damn! I need to slow down so we can go through some more fun stuff. Whew, my heart's racing. That was good. So you can feel that all-wheel drive. It is, it is a heavy system, but look at—I mean, we're cornering really nicely. Oh, he's turning. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that sound. Man, I could listen to that all day. That's with the windows up. We might have to do this with the windows down in a minute. Wow. Wow. The handling is excellent. We got ugh, binary brakes. Yeah, I gotta slow down for that dip, otherwise we'll scrape. Very planted, zero body roll whatsoever. It just, the steering's a little vague. Uh, it definitely does not have the precision of the Ferraris, but it's still excellent, excellent handling, excellent steering, very pointed. No slop at all in the steering wheel. I mean, it is very, very tight. You can feel everything in the road. Correction to that statement, you can feel a lot in the road. It's not quite as much feedback as you get in the Ferraris because, again, the all-wheel drive system is going to kind of numb up a little of that. Just a little. It's it's not enough to really be like disappointed. Oh, that sound and that torque is fantastic. Woo! Let me tell you, those shifts under full throttle in sport mode are violent. Like shake the fillings out of your teeth violent. Alright, here we go. Some more cornering. Just ooh. Yeah. So I've been asked many, many, many times, hey, I'm looking at a Gyro, I'm looking at a 430, which should I get? I used to say always, ah, oh, get the Ferrari, get the Ferrari, the Lamborghinis aren't as good a driver's car. I honestly can say I'm conflicted with that now. Uh, the regular Gyro's are at a massive discount compared to the 430s, and I know they're not gonna behave quite as awesome as this being the super Legera, but ah, man that's a lot of car for the money honestly i think you would have to say whichever one you feel like you want the most is the one you should get because they're they're fantastic both of them and that's the reality most of these cars are just amazing you know and it's it's splitting hairs right you split hairs you know i i know i crap on mclaren all the time they're amazing they're amazing but they're just some people like one or the other I generally prefer Ferrari over others, but this is a fantastic car. There's just no question it's fantastic. All right, fun stuff again. It's just a bright orange Lamborghini. It's exactly what it should be. This is a fun, fun, fun car. I really love it. Honestly, I'm gonna have a hard time selling this thing. I've only driven it a handful of times and I'm already really smitten with it. I, I get it now. Like you don't 
get Lamborghini until you own one. The Gallardo versus the Huracan. I've driven the Huracan and I don't know that I was quite in love with the Huracan the way I was with this. It's just something about this is endearing. And maybe it's because like it's got pretty good visibility. The visibility's better, I think, than the Huracan. The Huracan had pretty bad visibility. And I'm not saying it's good. This is not as good a visibility as the Ferraris. You know, part of it's because the dashboard is like 10 feet long and the window is, the windshield's so raked that, you know, like you can't even see uh, stoplights unless you like crane your neck down. But man, it's just fun. What a fun car. I need a break. This is not the kind of car that you want to take a date out for a smooth evening and have her wearing a small little dress. She will, uh, she will not appreciate it. it just, we'll just leave that at that. When you want to go out and play, this is definitely ready to play. The very touchy brakes does get a little bit annoying because like you're trying to be smooth and cool and every time you touch the brakes, you're, uh, you know, lunging. The e-gear is, of course, the the complaint that most people have of this car, they all say it's garbage. It is what it is, it's not bad. It does take some finesse once you get used to the pedal and the way that the clutch engages. You can manage it pretty nicely. You can even have it be fairly smooth. There's some moments that are a little bit like, uh, launching hard, not the greatest thing. You don't wanna do that very much. It is pretty hard in the clutch and it's just, it's awkward and, and it's kind of uh. Smooth driving is not too ridiculous once you get the feel for it. Hard driving, those those shifts are kind of fun. I mean, when it beats you like that on the shift, it's kind of fun. It feels like banging gears. I think that gives it some personality. I actually like that. I would rather have it in a manual. Of course, everyone would, but I'm not gonna kick it out of bed. I'm not gonna say, no, screw that. I'm not buying one because it's got an e-gear. No, it's fantastic. It's still an amazing car with a lot of fun, but you just have to change your expectations to be, okay, it's gonna be a little bit like herky-jerky and a little bit wonky and slower speeds, so you know, like watch. Yeah, you know, a little bit jerkiness there. Not terrible. Oh, yeah. The shifts, though. Oh, I love the shifts. <laughs> All right, let's get some highway speed. I mean, it's, it's noisy. This is not a uh, comfort cruiser. This is a sports car and it's every bit a loud, noisy sports car that you would expect. Lots of road noise. You couldn't have a good conversation. And once you got it into higher gear, you don't really hear that exhaust much until you get on it. But then, you know, it's kind of pleasant when you do. I don't know that I'd want to do a big, long road trip with this car. Having done lots of road trips in these types of cars, this is particularly rough. When we took and went to uh, Las Vegas one time, Art drove his Scuderia all the way out there and he said it was pretty miserable. In fact, they actually had earplugs because it was so loud. So, I mean, these type of cars, this is, you know, don't fool yourself into thinking, oh, this is gonna be awesome, that's gonna be super pleasant. It's not, it's awesome, it's not pleasant, right? Get that in your head right off the bat. Let's not kid ourselves. You're buying this car because you want a brutish Lamborghini that's punch you in the face. And this is every bit of that. It is socking you in the face every time you stomp that gas pedal, every time you pull gear. It's perfect. It's just perfect for what you're buying. No one's fooling themselves with this car. And it shouldn't. It's not trying to masquerade as anything other than what it is. It's unabashedly Lamborghini. It is a middle finger to Ferrari. That's what this car is. That is what it's meant to be. <laughs> now, is this going to make me switch to Lamborghini? I don't know, but I could live with this. I would be very happy with this. I, I wouldn't kick it out of bed. Now, there is definitely some cultural differences. There's no denying that. Ferrari has a very specific culture. Some of it can be a little bit snobbish. You know, it's a little bit of elitism. And I think Lamborghini owners have a little bit more fun. They're not afraid to modify cars and just enjoy them. But I mean, that's, that's not to say that there aren't Ferrari owners in the same boat. So I think it's too much of a generalization to say all Ferrari owners are snobbish or that they, you know, don't have fun or whatever. But <laughs> that's awesome. 
fun. Yeah, that's fun. It's antagonizing. It, it's like, it's a red light. You know you want to stomp the gas pedal. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. Come on. Give it hell. Okay, so the big question on my mind, as a multiple Ferrari owner and a Ferrari enthusiast, would I switch teams? Would I consider going into the Lamborghini world for this car? I have to tell you, I'm conflicted. I, I don't think I have a clear answer yet. Honestly, if I were saying I'm on the market today for a Ferrari F430 or a Lamborghini Gallardo, it'd be tough. I, now, that being said, this is the Superleggera, so it does have a lot of special things about it, and I have to say I appreciate those special things, and that does make it a little bit more endearing to me. I don't know about the regular Gallardo. Uh, full disclosure, I've never driven a regular Gallardo, so I don't know if they behave exactly the same, but I have to assume it's very close, because the performance numbers are not that much better than, on this thing than the regular Gallardo, so I don't know that it makes enough of a difference to matter. The Ferrari 430 has gone up a boatload in value lately, and these have not gone up that much. Yes, they're up, but they're not up a crazy amount. The Ferrari 430 is up 30, 40, even $50,000. The manuals are up over a hundred thousand dollars. It's just gone nuts. You could still get these for under a hundred thousand dollars. Not the Superleggera, but the regular Gardos. And even the Superleggeras are in the like 150 to 180 range, which is still not that much. So I don't know. This does place it right in that same area that the 430 was when I bought it in the sub $100,000 category, and I have to say, that is a hell of a car for $100,000. I don't know, I don't have a clear answer for you. I would say you have to drive them both. And you might be like me, you might fall in love with both. So there's no wrong answer, I guess, is the thing. Uh, they're both amazing. They're really fantastic cars. This is an amazing car. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I got to try something different. So we still have to see, is it as easy to work on? We, uh, who knows? I will tell you already, the service manual is nowhere near as good for the Lamborghini as it is for the Ferrari. The Ferrari service manual is fantastic. Lamborghini service manual, yeah, it leaves a little bit lacking. We'll leave you with that. I don't, I don't have a clear answer for you, but either way, you won't be disappointed. So please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We do appreciate that tremendously. Thank you so much to all of you. And of course, we're gonna be having more reviews on this, so stay tuned for that, including Meg. She's gonna give her apathetic review. I know you guys love that. And of course, if you wanna support us, you can go to normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your car, so please do that. We do appreciate that greatly. But other than that, we're gonna be doing a lot more car stuff, so you guys are gonna wanna stay tuned. It's gonna be sweet.